talking about it, we may get up to 20 pages, 30 pages like this. And the rest will be up to you, inshallah ta'ala. But inshallah ta'ala, we have the brothers here from the administration. I'm going to put myself on front street. <clears throat> when these books are available, uh, I'll get them. Uh, we'll probably get about 40, 50 books. And uh, particularly the brothers and sisters who, who came out today to support just let it be known in the bookstores. We have a bookstore upstairs for the women, and we have one down here for the men. Just let it be known that I was there that day. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Sheikh Abdul Rahman, the brother. And he is the son of Sheikh Abdul Mohsen, the brother. Nah, not bad, brother. Nah, so we don't mix it up. Just a brief biography, inshallah ta'ala, that he did on um, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. And they mentioned that he is the son of al man <coughs> Sheikh Abdul Mohsen, the brother of Allah Ta'ala. And that he was born on the 22nd day of the Qadr, the year 1382 after the Hijrah, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In his current occupation, is that he teaches, or he's part of the staff in the University of Medina. But the Sheikh, he also teaches, Sheikh Abdul Razak also teaches classes in the Prophet's Masjid. The classes that we attended with him were normally um, after Fajr. And then his father, Sheikh Mohsen, would be teaching the classes there after Salat al Muslim. Now every day. So yeah. Of course, he, uh, they mentioned that he has a, um, certification in the doctrine of Akiva. And the Sheikh wrote many, many different books. Among them is the book I'm going to mention today. And they just gave a small, short, brief uh, biography of the Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. Of course, the book starts off with the Khutbah to Hajj. And then Sheikh, he sends the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, asking that Allah as well tell, raises him in rank and his family and his companions and that Allah has to send the peace and the blessings upon them. I mean, he said, I'm about As to proceed, he said, our topic in this meeting is about the proper conduct in the house of Allah as well, in the houses of Allah, in the masjid. Now, he said, which is most beloved place to Allah as well, the most virtuous and the best place on earth. He said, there's an authentic hadith reported by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet says, <coughs> he said that the Prophet he said that the most beloved places to Allah as a jail on earth is the masjid. The most beloved place. And he said, <coughs> and the most hated place, the most hated place to Allah as a jail, as a wild is the soul. Now the marketplace. SubhanAllah. So we if we were to stop there, what does common sense tell us? Where should I hang out the most? In the mall or in the masjid? Should I hang in the place that's most hated by Allah? No. If we want to attain the love of Allah, then we go to the places that Allah loves. And stay away from the places that He hates. Now, nah, that's just common sense. The Shaykh said the masjid is distinctively celebrated for the uh, for the for the many great and beloved acts of good deeds, such as the plentiful remembrance of Allah as a Rasul, that it and the establishment of the prayer, the recitation of the Quran, the circles of knowledge and learning. He said, on the contrary, the marketplace is fraught. What does this word mean? It's an old English word, fraught. Somebody know? I'm just asking. It's full of or have love. Fraught. Fraught. F R A U G H T. Fraught. Shake, shake your can. No professor's allowed to say anything. Read the sentence again. He said that this is the place where. Allah is remembered, that the prayer is established, where the Quran is read, where the circles of knowledge are taking place, and the learning of the religion. And he said, on the contrary, the marketplace is fraught with unlawful transactions, bad deeds, and other abominable acts that are habitual in the marketplace. Filled in abundance. It's, it's the place, it, it's, uh, it, it means that as we relate to the marketplace, this is the place where evil, as, as was being mentioned here, this is where evil occurs. Evil, bad deeds, bad manners, bad statements. People cheat each other, they lie. Oh yeah, this is a, a brand new piece. It's been brand used. The person refurbished the, the television. He's selling it as if it's new. The marketplace is a place where there is no trustworthy actions made most of the time. Is, is it like that in the masjid? No. Why? Because everybody's trying to attain paradise. The people in the marketplace, they're trying to attain a, mal, a, a money. So it's different. The thought is different. The behavior is different. It's real aggressive. In the masjid, the people are tender, easy, and kind. Now, in a state of remembrance, thinking about Allah as a wajah. They, they're, they're, they're in a state of a taqwa. Now, they become in a place where the iman is increased. When you walk into the mall, you feel an increase in iman? Huh? That place makes you forget Allah with all the decorations and all the things that are on sale and the prices and the offerings. Come on, man. You, you start to think, okay, I need to get a deal. Where's the deal that I can get? When you come in the master, you're thinking about the attribute. Huh? Remember we mentioned about Ibn Qaim al When he came around the people, he used to start thinking about how he can help someone. Who can he help? Only because he, he, he knew this hadith of the Prophet Where Allah Azza wa said, whoever aids the servant, Allah will always help him. Now, that's how the person comes into the masjid. The attitude is different. The mindset is different. The heart is in a different place. Where's your heart at when you walk in, 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 in into Shabbat? Huh? Yeah. That's it. That's the only thing you think about. And, and, and making sure that you have your Shabbat card when it's number so you can swipe it and lower the price. That's the benefit. 
Oh, if I go out spending a hundred dollars, I got my card. The benefit is when I swipe it, I watch the numbers come down. <laughs> now it's eighty-five dollars. I benefit. That's how you feel when you come to the masjid. No, no. When you come to the masjid and you make one salat, what's the average? How many? Hey, no, the mindset different, man. And why do you want that edge? Yeah. For the hereafter. But when you go to shop, right, and you want the price lower, that's for that time. I'm trying to save my money for right now. It ain't got nothing to do with the hereafter. Now? So, hey, no. so the mindset is different. So it, it, it changes our view of this place, man. We take the message for granted. Wallahi, we, 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 we take it for granted. Now, we practically forget that this is called Baytullah. Now, we, we treat it as if it's just called a, a bait, the house. That's it. But the fact that it's the house of Allah, man. That's why the Sheikh said, no, 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 this is, this is a different place. Different things happen here. The remembrance of Allah happens here. You don't go in, in any shopping area and find the people sitting and remembering Allah. You don't find no Muhammad You don't find a, 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 a class going on in the mall. Nah. Not that it wouldn't be somebody there giving down. That's something different. Nah. No, man. This place here is blessed. We have to start treating it and looking at it like that. He said, it is enough of an honor for the masjid to be called the house of Allah. Baytullah. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough as an honor. The problem is we don't understand the depth of it. Like we were talking to Sheikh Muhammad al-Maliki, and, 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 and I said this before. He said, you know, we don't understand the depth of the salah. He said, and I'm talking about the takbir ikram. We don't understand the depth of it. The, and, and, and this proves that we don't have a good total concept of tawheed. He said, because if we had that kind of understanding, he said, when you say Allahu Akbar, he said, before you get to Surah al fatiha tears will come from your eyes. If you really knew and understood the greatness and the might of Allah Azza Now, I'm saying that to say this. When we truly understand the might of Allah Azza as it relates to a tawheed, nah, then when we say the house of Allah, then it's going to have some value. It's going to have some true worth to us. Nah? It's not just going to be a place where I come and meet uh, Abdul Muqabdi. Yeah, yeah, my man, he's going to be there, inshallah. I talk to him today. I'm going to see him at the masjid. That's what the masjid is to me. Well, business transactions. Yeah, business transactions. I'm, I'm, I'm going to meet this brother here for that. I'm, that's the reason why we're going to the masjid? That's the niyat? That's the intention for going to the masjid? Just to see and hang and chill and eat and cool out? Nah? Then how are we going to get the ashes? How are you going to get the barakah? How? <coughs> so he said, it is enough <coughs> of an honor for the messages to be called the houses of Allah. He said, Allah attributed to himself. Now, in order to honor it, and this is with anything, this is well known. The, 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 the Mashaikh had, had, had made this clear. <coughs> When Allah Azza wa mentions something with Himself, it raises that thing in virtue and in honor. Now, so here, Allah's name is mentioned with the masjid. Right? First and foremost, the Kaaba. But it raised that thing in honor. And, and it's something that we have to recognize. And it, well, I, the, when we say that we have to understand it, That we say we have to understand what we know based on what we've been learning. Salam. Knowledge does what? So now it precedes statement and action. So it's telling us that when we know that this is the house of Allah, and because of its virtuousness, and because of the honor, it dictates action. It means that we should be acting like this place is an honorable place, a virtuous place, and caring for it in that manner. Remember? You understand? 
and caring for it in that manner, entering into it in that manner, leaving it in that manner. Why? Because it's the house of who? Hamza? Is Hamza's house? No, it's Allah's house. The one who created you. The one who's given you life and one day is going to give you death. The one who's provided for you. This is, it has to be put in, into its proper context. Now, the owner of everything, Rabbul Alameen, when every, every time you recite Surah Al Fatiha, now, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of what? Huh? Don't be shy, this ain't the shy time. For all that exists. For all that exists. This is his house. The Lord of everything that exists, this is his house. Well, I so we enter the, 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 the message. Now, you don't come in loud. Oh, I keep saying, wake him up. Well, like, how many times have we seen this behavior? Why? Because we're not conscious of where we are. We treat the house of Allah as a jail as if it's the schoolyard, as if it's the job, if it's our own homes. Huh? So we enter Allah's house with respect. And wallahi, wallahi, if we enter this house of Allah disrespectful, you find the people imitating us and doing the same exact thing that we do. They abuse the house of Allah, they disrespect the house of Allah. Why? Because we in here doing it. Now, by the Jum'ah, when we make the announcement, brothers, ah, oh, King up. Hey, talk to me, I said, I can't lower your voice. Why? Look, it was some men that were traveling during the time of Umar, Ibn al Khattab, and after they made the Salat, these men were talking, they would raise, they raised their voice. Umar went over to them and he asked them, Where are you from? And they said they were traveling, they were from this other place. He said, Indeed, if you were from Medina, and you raising your voice in the masjid, I would have did something to you. What does that tell you? So you have to have respect when you come in the house of Allah. Because he's saying to them, look, if you're living here, it's my roof. If you don't raise your voice like that, man, that's true. But because you're from somewhere else, maybe you don't know. We, we're going to give you an excuse. Now, nah? if you was from here, Umar would have handled it. Now, nah? showing you have to, Umar was showing you have to respect the house of Allah. <coughs> It's not the place for the extreme laughter. Now, where it overtakes the room, silly talk. We don't even think about the words, the things that we're saying when we're sitting in this place. Some of the people will talk about anything, anything, without any shyness. They won't say to themselves, I'm in the house of Allah, I shouldn't say this. Now, they give more respect to the hospital. Now, I've seen people in the hospital, when they go to the hospital, they realize, I'm in the hospital. Don't raise your voice, there's people sick. Because you give their place more respect in this place. The courthouse. It was touched by the courthouse. <laughs> Dare not. Dare not raise your voice in the courthouse. Or be on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> no, they put you out. The judge will hold you in contempt. And you in the back, you have nothing to do. You're watching. And you raise your voice and say, look, if you keep talking, I'm going to lock you up. <laughs> now, in the masjid, in the house of the one who created you, subhanAllah. Now, oh, man, it, it has to change. Because our children, they're watching us. You see that young brother right there? He's watching us. So we in here talking loud and acting crazy. Now, misbehaving. Disrespecting Allah as well, John. May Allah protect us from bad behavior. Now I'm in endowing with good manners and that which is beloved to Allah. Now, but that stuff, man, it 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 it, it rubs off. Now, the Prophet said something. He said, "Al-Rajul Al-Amin Khalil." He said, "Man, it's only reason of his friend." Now, for the people you hang around, if, if, if they're like that. Then it's gonna rub off. You're gonna do the same thing. Now, this place has to be protected. People say, "Well, I give my money." I'm talking about your money. That's 
only one way. No? It's not that you're going to go to a church, but you don't find people doing this in the churches. And that's cool for the church. So the Sheikh, he said, Allah Azawajal attributed this house to himself in order to give it honor and in order to glorify its status and to display its lofty standing. He said <coughs> that indeed Allah Azawajal mentioned in Surah Al-Jinn, وَإِنَّ مَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا He said, indeed, the masjids are for Allah and Him alone. That's a bad translation. Here it says, indeed, the masjids are for Allah. فَلَا تَعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا So don't call on anything but Allah alone. Don't call on anything but Allah and Him alone. Now imagine that. I'm, I'm going to tell you a clear example. And I've seen it on many occasions, many occasions. Now growing up as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, it, it finally stopped in some places of the people who understand the religion. But the people who have this interfaith-like movement, or when they want to invite their non-Muslim families, they come to the imam and say, you know, they're here. Is it okay if they stand and pray with us? No. Because of what Allah Azawajal said. The only name that's called on in the messages of Allah, in the messages of Allah, is who? Allah. It's Allah. How you gonna have the Christian just to make them feel good and comfortable? Come on and pray with us. And then he got the Asa Ibn Umarim in his heart. We, 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 we make an Asa prayer. There's nothing being said. You don't have to say it. You can't have the, the, the mushrik praying in the masjid. The only thing that gets, that, you know how disrespectful that is for somebody to have a, a, a gathering and then tell the Christians, come on and pray with us, we're about to make salah. Is that honoring the house of Allah? No. The only thing, the only name that should be mentioned and called on in the house of Allah is Allah, whether it's said openly or in the heart, silently. I'm telling people, come they stand there. Okay, what, what, what is the, the, the non Muslim thinking about when he's standing next to you? Easy. They might easy. They may look at you, you go down, you go down. You stand up, you go, they look at you, and they say, even though he did this to make you feel comfortable, and you disrespect Allah as well, you in order to make the mushrik comfortable. You can practice your shirk, it's okay in the house of Allah. That's what you're saying. Putting a stamp of approval. That person may say, okay, so what I'm, I'm, I'm gonna become a Muslim for? You know what we seem to be real effective? When we, we have a dabble program and we say to the numbers, you know, you can't pray because you don't believe in Allah. And they see the brothers get up and the, and the sisters and the women are standing, they see the women stand up, they feel left out. And they have to watch that. And when it's over, they used to come to us and say, oh man, I feel left out. Well, what, how, how come I couldn't pray? I said, because you still believe in Jesus. And they, they say, wow, <coughs> I think I want to be a Muslim. That was beautiful. Some people have accepted Islam in this last year just from watching the Salat, not participating in it. Now, huh? Well, now you have to think. Don't do it in your listen. The person say, "Well, I, I don't pray will be at home." No, you don't do that either. How? How? It's upon you to establish the tawheed. See, a lot of people they shy about that. That's the time. So the Shaykh, he goes on to say, because of the time, I'm real worried about keeping people. He said in Surah Al Nur, ayah 36 and 37, he said, In the houses of Allah, which has ordained, which were ordained to be raised, now, with clear honor, in the name 
Now, Allah has a job. And then Allah's name are glorified in it in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening by men who neither get involved in trading or selling, that which will divert them from the remembrance of Allah. Al Shaykh, he said, we look at this statement of Allah, he said the phrase to be raised in them his name and that is glorified. He said to sum it up, all of the rulings and the proper conduct related to the masjid, they are to be raised for what reason? For the name of Allah, so that Allah's name can be glorified. The reason why people establish masjid. Not because the what has happened to the Muslims is that they want to establish the biggest masjid, the most beautiful masjid. I'm talking about in America. So they can be looked at, and so the other Muslims will be in awe over what they have. Oh, look at this masjid. Look how big it is. I seen on the news uh, today. They had uh, went to a masjid here in New Jersey. And even the news reporter said, this is a very big, beautiful masjid. And it has social service offices connected to it, and a gym over here, and it has this, and it has that. And I said, oh, subhanAllah. Now, some of the Muslims put their money together for the sake of Riyadh and showing off. They have the real big places, big, beautiful places. Huh? And but when you check them for the Akida, right? And the Minhaj, it's kind of to the left. And the intent behind doing it was just so that everybody would be in awe. The messages are to be raised only for the sake of glorifying the name of Allah and that's it. That's it. I remember uh, some time ago, maybe a couple of months ago, this one brother used to send me pictures of messages from around the world. Well, like some of them beautiful, some of them simple. But he sent me this one that, that came from Ghana. I think it was Ghana. And the only thing that was there as a masjid, it was a hut made out of grass. It went right to the floor. And it had one, I'm talking about this huge speaker hooked to the side of it for the Muayyad. Ahi, this masjid looked like it could hold about 10 people inside. But that was their masjid. Now, they wasn't worried about trying to impress the Muslims. They, they wanted to have a place where they could worship Allah and glorify his name and raise his name and honor his name. Now, I remember when we started we had a little place, and that place was so cold <laughs> that they bought a jet engine. I don't know what they call this thing. <laughs> Remember what it was? It was like a big, long jet engine that they had. And they had I, I think they said the construction workers used it when they work outside, when they build and build it. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It looked like a jet engine. We didn't have heater. So my brother said, I got an idea. And he came, and this thing would move. It would be hungry. I mean, water. We were trying to do classes over this thing, have the hook over this thing. Now, I can't even lie. One day, it was so cold. Like the carpet down, Allah blessed us. Wallahi, Allah blessed us. We didn't have the soft, what you call the thing, underneath the carpet, the cushion. We had that. I, can't, I remember giving the khutbah, and the wind blew, and the carpet, on the carpet on the floor, was flapping going up and down in front of the brothers, man. The air was coming, the cold air was coming up from the floor hitting me. SubhanAllah, I'm standing on the middle of my shiver. The brothers sitting there shivering. The, the, everybody's cold. You, you, you think we was doing that to show off? <laughs> That's my point. You think we came to let us go in that place and be cold and suffer just so people think we righteous? No, man. He's trying to establish something for Allah, inshallah ta'ala. The attempt to try to establish something for Allah. Now, we were 
rain and the cold. Come on, man. So some places I've, I've been, when we moved to, to Washington Street, we went to another city. I'm not going to say where it is because I don't want to embarrass anybody. And where we were on, on, on uh, Washington Street, I was still thinking, oh, this is it's still rough. It's kind of rough. Some brothers had a lecture at a particular masjid. They invited us. We went down. Wallahi, we walked inside the masjid, and when you looked up, the whole ceiling had a hole in it. You could see outside. I said, Allah blessed us. <laughs> I turned around to them brothers. I said, Allah has blessed us. They was like, yeah. But we all stood there, and we prayed, and we had the left. We had a hole in the roof. I it ain't about showing off. It's about establishing that thing to raise Allah as a name in this deen high in the land, man. Now, nah? and that takes sacrifice. Look, the Prophet says sometimes everybody knows. When they built the, the uh, masjid, and remember around uh, Ramadan, how did they know about Qiyam uh 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 Qadr? The Prophet says something they said that he had a vision that he was when he, he was praying in the rain. That when his head went down and he got up, he remember having in a dream uh, mud on his face. That actually happened to him. That actually happened to him. What was the roof made out of? Palm leaves. From the palms. What was the pillars in, in, in the master made from? The trunk of the tree. You know what I'm saying? Nobody building something to show off. We do what we have to do to raise Allah's name high in the land, man. Now, nah? through patience and perseverance, what I'm without without count, Allah got us here. Probably less sometimes the roof, our, our sisters got to deal with the leaky roof. Inshallah, we're going to fix it. But that kind of stuff keeps you humble, man. Don't give you the big head. You'll come in and say, oh, we got the, look, it's marble on the floor. There's big carpet. And look at all the brothers we have now. And many sisters. And then, and then it rains and the water comes in. Oh, okay, take it easy here. Abdullah. Understand? Because you got to keep your intent. The intent got to remain. Same all the time, man. I thought, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Hi. 
Sheikh said, and as it relates to it being raised or to be raised, he said, raising and glorifying the name of Allah as a and raising the, the uh, masjid under this understanding, he said it covers many things. He said, one, it covers building the masjid, right? That's my word. He said it covers cleaning the masjid. He said it covers attending the masjid. And he said it covers preserving the masjid. And he said, of course, this entails the glorification of Allah's name. He said, but in connection to that, it covers the establishment of the prayer, the reciting of the Quran, and studying knowledge. He said, but now, one of the important things that's established and becomes well known. He said, we find in the ayat that Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Rijalun la tulahimi tijarun wa la bayun and a dhikri He said, we find that Allah says in this ayat, men who neither trade nor sail diverts them from the remembrance of Allah as a He said, what's men? He said, going to the masjid is for manhood. So he's saying, real men go to the masjid. You want to see a man, you'll see him driving or walking to the masjid. That's a man. That's how we judge men. It's not by who can take who down, who can do the greatest sidekick. No. The best pin, the best flip, the best hand lock, head lock. It's not this guy. It's the one who you see driving and walking to the masjid. That's a real man. That's what men do. Our mother Aisha, remember she said that when the Prophet was home, he would help us around the house. He would be cleaning and doing things around the house. The Prophet would sew his own clothing. Nah? You see, real men help around the house. He ain't chilling and laying back. My, my wife, that's my servant. That's my, no, that's my. He's helping in some way, in some form. Nah? She said, but when the time for Salat came, he left us like he didn't even know us. That's what men do. Peace, baby. Nah? Huh? Peace, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some guys get stuck. They want to cuddle. Everybody's right to get <laughs> They want to cuddle. They want to cuddle. You can't even leave. <laughs> I don't want to leave. You might need to come up with stuff. <laughs> She can tell them, go, go. <laughs> no, go to the masjid. That's what men do, man. Establish your manhood, man. Now, everybody watch. Sons, daughters. Now, we got to get our lazy selves up our, with that neglect. Establish that thing. We think of manhood as something else. That's why it, 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 we, we have to look at the sunnah. We have to look at the sunnah to really see what manhood is. It's all oh, real men go to the masjid. Yep. Real men, they kiss their wives and give them salams and go out that door. And when they come back, they return and do the same thing. That's what real men do. Right? Look, what Sheikh said, that this is the uh, establishment of manhood in its perfect and most sublime appearance. Now, this is one of the most perfect appearances. Huh? As it relates to, you know, you, you want to see a man? He's somewhere, he's lifting weight, he's doing. No, you see the brother, he's going. So I'm like, here we go. I'm going to the masjid. He's going, that's a man. <laughs> no. That's a real man. Nah? The Sheikh said, that's the most perfect appearance that you can ever see. The brother on his way to the masjid. On his way to where? Allah's house. Not his house. Not, not the house that he pays rent or, or the, the one that he owns. 
That's not the best appearance. Where are you going out here? I'm going home. Okay, I'm doing that. But when he says to you, you see him going to the master, he says, I'm love. You know, Allah Azza wa Jalla calls us to have this perfect appearance. He said, unfortunately, the true essence of manhood has been diminished in a very significant way. He said, you only see them in a strong, healthy, physical form outside of the masjid. Most of the men. And he said, which reflects how empty they are, how empty the masters are. Turn around. Turn the book, 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 book. Man, is the shake here? Was he here with us? Nah. Because look, if the Muslim man really wants to implement manhood, then the masters will be full. That's what he's saying. If you're a real man, then the masters will be filled up with the men. That's not the case. And we ain't talking about the brothers who got to work at night and you got these, you know, crazy hours for jobs. No, we're talking about the people who actually have time. May Allah forgive us. Amen. The masters should be packed. You get home in time enough to go to Maghrib and Isha. We know from after Fajr all through Lord Asa, you work. That's known. You live in America? Yeah, you got a hustle. It's not Saudi Arabia. There's no break. Um, after the war, you go home and take a kidula, then you come back, Baba Asa, and you. No, it's not like that. Certain places in, in uh, Africa, the same way. Right? Certain places in Europe, it's the same way. Nobody works the way they work here in the United States. Nah? This is crazy. But we're here and you have to do it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But one thing for sure, when we go and look at this, what the Sheikh is saying, we have to start making time. Even if it's, look, I'm going to go to the next year, I got to pray, I got to go home because of my work. It's like, man, at least I got to be in the master at least once a, 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 a day, at least. Maybe we can get in there for Fajr and get back in there for Isha and go home. But I got to be in there at least once a day. Imagine af after hearing this, real men go to the masjid and you didn't pray in the masjid all day. You feel like a man? How you feel? No, man. You feel something, something's wrong, something's missing. And sometimes we're wondering, like, man, what's wrong with me? We ain't praying in the masjid enough. We're not going to the masjid enough. So it has an effect on you. This is the place where you come and charge your battery. This is the real mustashva. This is the hospital right here. You ask any of the brothers who ever went overseas and they made Omar or they made Hajj or Hajj. Now? Nah? <laughs> hey. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and they returned? You see the people that come back and be, oh. I need to be fired up. See, I'm about to do things to tell you. I'm about to, I said, but this shit, I don't know this. He just fired up. I said, man, wait a minute. He's only got his battery charged. This Iman is now enraged, man. The same thing happens here. Right? Because maybe everybody can't go. So you got to come to the masjid. And you sit with a brother and say something to you. I send your Iman through the roof. Just I need it that way. But at home you're there, you're wallowing, wallowing in your misery and what the woe is me and I don't got and I don't have. Go to the master, man, you're sick. You need to be cured. Something's wrong with you. You need to stand in the salah and get off them, those sins. Now, and get about 25 to 27 edging. You need that. You need to come in here and, and, and make the sunnah. Now, tie to a master. Now, because look, if you're home, you're going to pray to have the masjid in your house? You going to pray to have the masjid in your house? No. Why? You just need to hear the right? That's right. <laughs> That's why. Because it's called to have the masjid. Not to have to bait. So you can only get it if you come here. Wow. You can only get 27 or 25 if you come here. How many, uh, Adrian, you know the number for praying at home? No? 
Not that you're going to get at you for praying, but it's different when you come here. Huh? So this place, we have to be excited to come here, to get here. Huh? Even, I, even if I can't stay long. And of course, a part of it is, is, is seeing our brothers. Shaky said, you find that these men, as a lot mentioned about them, and this is the proof of their manhood, that they are not diverted by trade and self, by business. They stop their trade and their business and their selling and go pray in the next year. Now, uh, uh, um, listen, you guys know I'm from Patterson. I'm a Pattersonian. I love Paps, but I, I love Esau. I'm not going to front. A lot of Muslims in Esau. And alhamdulillah, the Muslim kind of person that owns businesses, he when it's time for the Salah, those brothers shut it down. And they put their sign up, went out to pray, be back at such and such a time. Those are men the Allah's talking. Do you know that there's some Muslims who have their own business? They're like, yeah, I know I can pray, but you know, I, I can't leave. I can combine. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll call me. You hey, man, can, can I combine? You know, I got a business. I can stop and go to the next gig. Why wouldn't you want to go to the house of Allah? What makes you want to stay out there in that filth, man? <clears throat> huh? Because they love the dunya. They love the dunya more than they love the house of Allah. That place of safety and tranquility, where the sakina comes down. You ever been at work working and the sakina come down while you work? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. That sakina it, 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 is coming down here right now. You know, when you're at work, do, do the angels are, are the angels flying around trying to find the brothers who, who are working? No, they 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 fly around looking for the people who are sitting in the hala, and they come down there. They don't come down at your job. This is the place. When are we going to start understanding that this is the place? There's no place like this place right here, right now. I can't tell you how many times brothers have came from work and came in here and sat in the corner like where Ibrahim is and went and went to sleep and woke up and said, that's the best sleep I ever had. That's right. Because you're in the house of Allah. You can't get to sleep in your house. I sleep better here than I sleep in my house. Now? You wake up, man, you feel charged, man. It's wow, I needed that. Pull up my witness face. <laughs> 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 now, th th this is what it is, man. We have to change the, the, uh, the uh, mindset. <laughs> the point was this, that these men don't allow the dunya to divert them from the worship of Allah Azawajal in his house. They, they, they make time and let everybody else know. It's not like, you know, they, they have their business and they sneak away. No, they put up a sign. Gone, I'll be back at such and such a time. The public is informed and they get used to it. So the man owns a business, they know that Salatul Lord is at one o'clock. They say, well, let's go to sleep. No, what time is it? No, he's praying. He went to the mess. The non-Muslims, I've seen it. I've seen it. That the thing, they, they, they have set themselves around the time that that brother, may Allah bless them, around the time they have set to go to the masjid, man. That's tremendous. And you find those people, they're not worried about the money that's coming in. Right? Why? Because they, listen, they understand the color of Allah. Right? You can stay there all day and not pray in the masjid. You're only going to get what Allah decreed for you. Those people know that. Whether I'm here or whether I'm not here, whatever Allah decreed for me today, that's what I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. So either I'm going to send a hundred bottles of water or I'm not. Do you realize 
that you go to Fajr, that talking about the businessman, he come back, he sells water. He come back, he said, look, I'm gonna go pray to the master. He closed the door. He's gonna sell a hundred bottles of water anyway, because Allah wrote it for him. And it may be right at the end of his day. And even going to the master and coming back, and then somebody come and say, you know what? I need a hundred bottles of water. He said, Allah ain't love. <laughs> Prior, or, or, or rather, opposite of the other guy, I can't leave, because if I leave, then you people will mess up my business. I ain't gonna make no money. You think that the risk is coming from you? So you won't leave. And then at the end of the day, he ain't even sell the bottle cap. <laughs> let alone the, a bottle of water. He ain't got nothing. Why, because he ain't forsake nothing. He ain't leaving nothing for Allah and Allah. Now, you leave that stuff for the sake of Allah, and Allah as well will give you better than it. Y'all heard that khutbah two weeks ago. If you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah is going to give you better. You sacrifice something for Allah, Allah is going to give you better than it. I'm going to stop. If you, if you can't come to the masjid, Wallahi Allah knows. Allah knows. He knows everything. He knows that you can't leave that job. That job is not like that. That guy is not going to let you leave it. But if you say to him, listen, I just need to pray five minutes. He says, okay, five minutes, that's all you get. It's the same thing, man. You can't go someplace and say, they won't let me pray. Did you ever ask him? No, I didn't ask. <laughs> How do you know they're going to allow you to do it if you didn't go and sit down and talk to them like a man? He said, you know, I'm Muslim. I pray five times a day, I'm going to be here. I will leave off my break time and I'm gonna use that to pray. Just let me walk off and pray five minutes, I'll come back, I'll continue working. It don't mean nothing. Nah? That's how you work. I can't do it. Nah? And that's where it is. said, the masjids of Allah shall be maintained only by those who believe in Allah in the last day. That's clear? The masjids of Allah are maintained by who? Those who believe in Allah, in the, believe in Allah <laughs> in the last day. Okay? So, can the mushrikeen maintain the masjid? Yeah. Okay. He said, they perform the salah, these some characteristics, and give the zakat, and they fear none but Allah. It is they who are expected to be among those who are truly guided. Yeah? I remember reading that Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he said about this ayah, that this ayah, the fact that you pray in the masjid, Right? Because maintenance is of various types. And from that, um, Sheikh uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, he said that the believer is the life, the life blood of the masjid. So he said the maintaining the masjid is not just in your money. He said it's in coming to the salah. It's in coming to the classes. It's in uh, coming in and sitting and reading the Quran or learning the Quran or making different. He said, all of this is maintaining the masjid. And he said, this is clearly understood, he said, because the family is the life's blood of a house or a home. 
He said, when you find that the family has been removed from that house and nobody ever lives there again, what happens to the house? Yeah, and it starts to fall apart because there, there's no one, it has to be a person there, a caretaker, a maintainer, right? So when the family is living there, the family is the life's blood. You see the light on in the house, right? You see people coming out and going in. You see a car parked there, but when the car is gone, the light's out, and years go by, and nobody ever lives in that house, it starts to fall apart. The paint starts to chip. Things start to happen. So the believers are the life's blood of the masjid. So you have been given the responsibility of maintaining it and holding it up, now nah? and protecting it and keeping it clean and all of these things that the Sheikh mentioned. And it is a proof of your demand because it's only those who believe in Allah on the last day pray in it and maintain it. So if you're coming in here, it's clear. You stand it in the salah, it's clear that you are from among those who believe in Allah on the last day. And they have they have some fear of Allah Azza And so they maintain it. And Allah said, these are those who have been guided aright. The people who are involved in maintaining and take care of this place, these are those people who have been guided aright. They don't have to be told. You need to do this? You need to get it. You need to do No, I mean, it's Allah's house. I mean, we, oh, wait. They see something wrong, they come in quietly, and they fix that thing. And brothers come in and say, who put that there? I don't know. Somebody did. Brother did it. Why? Because of his understanding of this place. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop there. And I apologize for any, uh, any mistakes that were made. But... I'm really going to apologize for not having enough books. I wanted to make sure that everybody had a book, inshallah. Um, before we close, what are some of the ways in which Allah's house is maintained? Praising it. Frequenting it. I can only give two books away down here. The other two books are for the sisters upstairs. <laughs> what is the purpose for building the masjid? The number one purpose that was mentioned. Worship Allah. Allah. I'm not giving this to him because that's my homie. We made Umrah and Hajj together. He said it first. He said, no, 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 that's his man right there. He said, first. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't have any way of um, getting the books to the sisters. Uh, whose wife is upstairs? Lady. Maybe she can text, the sisters can hear me. And, um, Well, yeah. Nadir said that his wife is up there. 